welcome to part 15 of the Runabout USS Ganges build-up. Uh, hopefully this will be the last update in this build series, because uh, we are near the end. The, uh, the runabout's been finished. I just uh, still need to put the trees and the, uh, the bushes on the diorama before I uh, mount the model on it. Uh, so I thought whilst I'm waiting for those to come in, I'll start work on the base itself. Now this base is uh, made of uh, MDF, which is the same material that the Deep Space Nine space station base was made of. Um, the diorama is basically going to sit on the top here. I'm not going to be um, glossing the whole of this top. The reason being is the fact that we've got the base here that the, uh, the diorama is going to sit on to support that. So that's going to actually sit on there, uh, roughly like so. And then we've got the rocks that come down the side here, which will cover most of this up. So I will only really need to spray uh, or, or gloss uh, a, little, a little edge around there, uh, because there will be, through these rocks, you'll be able to see some, some, see some of the gloss surface. Um, but I won't need to go totally overboard and, and, and sort of gloss the whole thing. So that should hopefully help to uh, cut down on the time. So this, at the moment, has had three layers of etched primer on it, which is basically this stuff. Um, it's from Halfords, and this is basically four cars. But this etched primer is a lacquer-based uh, primer, so it doesn't actually harm the MDF. And it does stick to it, like the proverbial, to a blanket as well. So that's absolutely fantastic. There were uh, a few little imperfections in the surfaces that I needed to smooth out. So I've basically once again used the uh, perfect plastic putty uh, to fill in all the seams. As you can see, there's a big one that runs all the way along there. And then there's just a, a couple of small ones uh, down that side. And then a little one on the edge there. And then at the front, you've got like those two there. And at the bottom, um, as you can see there, this is actually hollowed out. This part here has just been hollowed out really just for weight saving more than anything else because uh, otherwise this base would have been really, really heavy. And this part here has just really been channeled out uh, to get the power through from this side um, and then the power switch, oh sorry no, it's the, the power switch on that side and the power comes through that side. The, uh, the pole for the stand will come through there with wires and then I'll have the uh, the little uh, the circuit board that I'm using to control the anti-collision lights that will sit roughly there like so so by the time uh, that's all put together you won't actually see any of that because that will be covered up by uh, the base that sits on top like so and then I just put a little bit of a felt covering over the top of that just to help make it smoother like I did with the, uh, the DS9 station base. So all I need to really do with this now is get this uh, sanded down with uh, 1200 grit uh, wet and dry paper. Um, once that's done I'll then be able to put another three layers of the etch primer on and then let that dry. And then I'll be able to come back tomorrow and start on the, uh, the gloss um, paint which is again uh, a Halfords as well and that's just basically a uh, gloss black acrylic lacquer uh, sorry acrylic paint on acrylic lacquer silly me um, and then once that's done I'll be able to then go over that with the uh, the clear gloss um, lacquer as well and then hopefully that should come out as nice and shiny as the DS9 base did so as soon as I've got some more work done to this, I will come back to you. Okay, so we've made some pretty good uh, progress on the display base. We've got three layers of the uh, black gloss paint on there. and uh, Hopefully, as you can see, if I move that about a bit, you can see the shine that's in there as it's just reflecting off of everything else that's, uh, that's about. So that's quite good. Um, the paint itself is looking really good. It's nice and smooth. 
there are no sort of uh, stipple orange peel effects in there which is absolutely great I do believe that this paint is actually uh, a self leveler although it doesn't say it on the uh, doesn't say it on the tin but it appears to be that as soon as you spray it on it just levels out straight away which is absolutely fantastic so all I need to do to this now really is just give this a light sanding just to make sure that there are no uh, remaining imperfections in there before I uh, spray the the next uh, layer of uh, gloss black on there and then I'll be able to give it another light sanding down again before I put the uh, the gloss paint on the uh, the clear gloss lacquer so we haven't uh, painted the middle of this and the reason being is the fact that we're only really going to have uh, we're only really going to need about uh, a centimeter maybe two centimeter band across there uh, in some places where the diorama doesn't fully cover the base and we've also done the same as well for the actual uh, foot of the base as well um, again we didn't paint the inside of that because from really outside of that screw hole that you can see there it's only really sort of half of that half of that width there that's actually going to be seen so we don't really need to go in and paint the whole of that um, the same as that it's just going to be an incredible waste of time and, uh, and paint at the same time as well so I'll just get the uh, the diorama and we stick that on the base so you can get a good idea of what it's going to look like so that's kind of roughly uh, what it's going to look like when it's on the base um, one of the other ideas that I'm toying with at the moment is when uh, the when I put the grass on, uh, sorry not the grass, when I put the trees and the shrubbery on I'm also thinking about putting climbers down the edges of these rock faces and in some places I'm kind of thinking of getting them to um, overhang the actual display bay itself um, one of the reasons I thought of that is because I want this to look as organic as it possibly can and I think one of the ways that I can do that is just by having those little uh, tendrils hanging off the edge to make it look as though it's just overgrowing the base itself but not sure yet you know I'll see how it looks um, I mean they will be being put on with uh, the Woodland Scenics glue uh, which it does dry clear anyway so you know if it doesn't look good I can always just remove them anyway so it's not a problem but it's worth experimenting to see if it does uh, give the effect um, that I've got sort of running around in my head at the moment <laughs> in regards to that and uh, if it does look good then at least it's that image that's out of my head and it uh, creates a little bit more room for something else to be stored in there so that's about it for the moment as soon as I've got some more work done to the uh, base I will come back to you okay so we've got both of the two layers of uh, gloss black on there we've also then uh, sanded that down and then added the three layers of the uh, clear gloss lacquer so as you can see I mean that's looking really really shiny now where it needs to be uh, so that's looking really good and then if I tilt this to the side you can actually see uh, a lot of reflection in there and then if I get my hand you can see my hand in there too um, you can see the pinkness of my hand as well in there so it just goes to show you how good that mirror finish is so I'm really happy with that I've also been working on the uh, electrics as well so in there at the moment we've got the power switch in and we've also got the power supply plug-in the next thing for me to do is to add the circuit board that controls the anti-collision lights that will also need to be uh, installed into the uh, the power switch as well uh, and that will sit about there ish I guess and then the wires are come through uh, this little hole uh, I don't know whether you can see that yeah there's a little hole there so 
the wires uh, from the runabout will come through that gap there and then they will mate up to uh, those two little holes there and then once that's done we'll be able to get the uh, the base in or sorry we'll be able to get the base screwed on um, which is looking really good that's just as shiny as the uh, the top of the base and then we'll be able to get the diorama in I was kind of hoping that uh, the trees and the bush or the bushes that uh, I'd ordered uh, would have come in today unfortunately they haven't done so it's been a week already and I've just gone back and looked at the email um, and the company that I've ordered, the from, ordered them from does say that um, they will send me an email once they've shipped them um, and I haven't received that email, uh, email yet and it's been a week so uh, I have sent them an email to ask them what's happening uh, and as yet I haven't had a response from them so I will just need to uh, be patient and see what happens with that one um, the website did say they had the stuff in stock but uh, you know don't know what's going on there so hopefully I might get an email off of them by Monday but anyway um, I will carry on with this and get some more work done to it and as soon as I have I will come back to you okay so uh, we've had a little um, setback <laughs> I think we can call this uh, in building the stand uh, unfortunately uh, I wasn't concentrating on where the solder iron was going when um, I was soldering all the wires on the inside for the kit and as a result uh, the soldering iron did touch my nice shiny smooth surface um, as you can see there um, <laughs> that was actually a lot worse than it is now believe it or not I'm just going through the process of actually repairing this and just building the paint up layer by layer uh, basically the soldering iron cut through this paint like it was butter and it gouged it virtually all the way down to the surface of the MDF so I've managed to go in and repair most of the damage <coughs> at this point as I say I've just been going in and just building up the paint layer by layer by layer by layer luckily enough this paint only takes 15 minutes to dry um, and this should hopefully be uh, the last coat that I put on there to actually get that back uh, to a flush surface now once that's done um, I'm just then going to leave it for the rest of the week actually um, because I should be able to just use normal car polish and just buff that out well that's the plan anyway I just, I've got some Auto Glim um, paint restorer uh, and that should work on there but as I say I just need to leave this for the rest of the week for it to uh, sort of dry properly and harden um, but to get that all smoothed down I am using um, a mixture of uh, the uh, the medium and the extra fine sticks uh, basically with the medium I'm just going in until I get it almost level and then I'm going back in with the extra fine just to make sure that it is level with the surface so it's a little bit of a setback but it's not too much of a problem because I'm still waiting on the trees to come in <laughs> so you know not not all is lost on that one so that's that's okay so hopefully this shouldn't take too long and uh, by the time I'm finished um, shouldn't even notice that it's there well that's that's the plan anyway I mean I've never really worked on a car body before so I don't know whether that'll work um, with this sort of particular paint you know just uh, by trying to polish it out but we'll soon see um, if not then I just mask off this particular section and just um, just recoat it with a lacquer and that'll be okay so that's about it for the moment I will uh, come back to you as soon as uh, I've got some uh, more work done to this okay so as you can see from there uh, we've now got the um, the surface sorted out you can still see a couple of little dots in there 
but when I run my finger over that, that's actually really, really smooth. So I'm quite happy with that repair there. All I need to now do is uh, just wait for the, uh, the lacquer to dry on this properly. Uh, and then in a couple of days time, I'll just uh, go over that with some uh, paint restore and see if I can actually bring that back to a, to a shine. Uh, if not, then as I said before, I just go over, I just mask this whole side off rather than um, sort of doing the whole base I just mask this one side off um, and then I just hit this side completely uh, with another couple of coats of uh, clear gloss lacquer and then hopefully that should make that disappear completely uh, so I'll keep you up to date on this guys and uh, hopefully next time you see this that would be uh, that that have disappeared completely so uh, I'll come back to you in a while well, you'll see in my ugly mug on camera again, uh, everybody says. Um, so you might probably saying to yourself, well, that can only mean one thing. And yes, you'd be right. The, the model's finished. It's, it's actually sitting right behind me at the moment. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but this is the first for me because this, this build has, has, has been done all in one go, whereas the others, the, the finales, have always ended up being at some point during the next build. So... Um, it's the first that I've managed to get this one sort of, uh, put out in one go. So that's good. Um, and there's been a few firsts on this one for me as well actually. The, uh, the interior resin kit. You know, I've never never built one of those before, uh, let alone doing all the modifications to it that I did. I think that was um, one part bravery and, and two part stupidity really actually to be quite honest. But it turned out quite good actually. I am really, really happy with the way that the interior of that kit turned out. Um, and the diorama as well. It's the first time I've ever done a, a, a diorama like that. I mean, I've done some really, really simple sort of uh, dioramas. But this this one, I've, I've, I've kind of, you know, I've taken it to the next level. As far as my skills are concerned, anyway. You know, so... Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really, really pleased with this kit. As I say, you know, the lighting on this one, I believe I got it dead right. I've, I've put little mini figures in there that I've painted, you know, I've never done that before. I've got the resin kit in there, which I've never done before. You know, I've got all of the anti-collision lights in there, the, the, the interior lighting as well. You know, that, that looks as though it's pretty much all spot on as well, to be quite honest. So I'm, I'm really happy uh, with the way that this model's turned out. So without further ado, um, I'll switch the attention to the star of the show. Uh, and we we'll take a look at the model. So if you bear with me a second guys, I'll just get it all set up for you so we can take a look at the kit. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so there's the display itself. I've had to put the camera fairly uh, far back from the display so you can actually see it all. Um, it is actually fairly tall with the trees sitting in there so you, need, you do need to uh, get the camera uh, back to see it all. Uh, but it's not looking too bad, and I like the uh, the contrast really between the uh, the rocks and the uh, uh, and, and the black of the uh, the display base. Um, I will um, speak to Jerry at HDA Model Works so I can get a plaque uh, to go in that area because the front of the base does look a little bit uh, a little bit barren. So I'll, I'll get um, a, a plaque made up for that at some stage in the future. I'm not really in any rush to uh, to get one for it though, but uh, it will be on my wish list to get. Just as I say, just to help tidy up the front of it and make it look a uh, a little less barren, really, rather than just having a red switch at the front. So that's that looking quite good. If we just uh, come in and. If you remember in the uh, one of the previous segments I was talking about some damage that I caused with the soldering iron to that area where I gouged out a trench in the uh, in the paintwork. You can't actually see that now, you can't see the damage that's been caused to it. If I just zoom in a bit, whoops, sorry, that's zooming out, uh, you can't see any damage there at all. Uh, it was around this area here. Um, and I did use the uh, the Auto Glim paint restorer on that, uh, and I just basically rubbed it until rubbed it and kept on rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing away at it until such time that it got rid of all the tiny little scratches in there. 
and sort of brought it back up to a reasonably decent uh, gloss shine and then I went in with the Auto Gleam wax as well to uh, sort of bring the shine back up to how it was um, so that's actually uh, that repairs work quite nicely so uh, I'm quite happy now that I did use the automotive paints because otherwise I'd have had to have resprayed the whole of that one side to uh, get that shine back so I'm quite happy with that one of the other things uh, I have done as you can see on the sides there is rather than actually putting vines all the way down the sides of the uh, the stand which I was thinking about I didn't do that because I did try it and it didn't look that good to be honest so all I did was I just put some little bushy creepy crawly things um, down the sides of the rock um, just to help sort of bring it alive a little bit um, and also the other benefit of those is is the fact that they hide where the seams are in the rock uh, in the rock face quite nicely where I've uh, joined the uh, the rocks together and then we've got another one on this corner here and then as you can see there we've got some little bushes spattered about the rocks there and then we've also got some uh, on the side of this rock here and then we've also got some down there and then as you can see there we've got the the little Starfleet figures in so if we just uh, zoom in a little bit for you you can see them just coming out the cave there which is great they look brilliant and um, you can see a little bit of mud uh, effect as well around the entrance to the cave there where the grass hasn't quite got to uh, to overgrow that area and then if we just uh, bring the camera up a little bit you'll also be able to see um, some little bushes that have grown up the side of the rock face there and then if we come to this side you'll be able to see a few more bushes there and then if we pan around you'll be able to see a few more bushes there as well and then if we just bring the camera around to the side of the model hopefully you'll uh, be able to see these uh, but we've got some more rock uh, sorry more bushes just down around that area as well just on the other side of the trees and then if we just uh, come around with the stand Uh, you'll be able to see that we've got another little bit of bush there and then we've got some sort of going across and down around there and then if we go to the back of the stand you'll be able to see that we've got some uh, around that area too so I'm actually quite happy uh, with the way that the uh, this display has actually turned out it is uh, looking quite nice and considering this is my first sort of real go at doing a display base like this, I don't think it come out too badly. Um, unfortunately, one of the nav lights on this side has gone again. Um, they're a pain in my life at the moment. They were working, and then that one's just suddenly stopped again. It flashed a couple of times, um, but then it just goes off again. Um, so it could be the resistors that I've used on this because uh, the the uh, anti-collision lights do have a 10k resistor on them um, and I know from the previous time that I had to go back in and fix them that once I'd taken them out and put a different resistor on them they did actually start working again so I think it is definitely the, res uh, the 10k resistors are too high so next time I think I'm going to have to go down to the 5.7k resistor and um, just put up with the uh, the higher brightness on the uh, on the lights there but if we turn the turn the display on there you go as you can see there you saw the uh, saw the uh, the light there just flash briefly and then go off again <coughs> and then if we just turn the the lights off and that's what she's uh, looking like uh, in the dark so if we just come down and you'll be able to see there we've got the little figure in the back there just see if we can zoom in a bit now one of the things that you do have to do with this unfortunately is go down at, a, at an angle to actually get in there but you can see we've got the chairs in there the table in there um, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll come off the uh, the tripod in a bit but uh, I'll just uh, 
try and get you in uh, to these uh, windows at uh, an angle. And there you go, you can see the, uh, the legs of the little man there. Uh, and you can see some tables in there. And then if we come around to the front of the ship, that's the uh, transporter room that you can see there. And you can just about make out the uh, one of the panels on the transporter there. And then if we just pan around, you can actually see where you've got the light coming in and the edge of the transporter there. So that's quite cool. Uh, so you can actually see in there quite nicely in person. It's just a bit difficult with the camera, really. And then if we just uh, come down a little bit further, you might... Well, you can basically see into the corner of the little transport room there. Uh, and then there is the one of the side windows for the cockpit. Uh, I'm not sure how far you be able to go around. You can actually see, uh, if I do that, basically you're, you're getting a lot of light sort of bleeding onto the model. So I'm just putting my hand over the warp engines at the moment there. But you can see uh, into the cockpit there. And then the other thing is, if I just pan around so you can see, oh, let's uh, zoom, let's uh, zoom out, there we go. You can actually see there the, the line um, going across the uh, the impulse engine. So it basically tells me that the uh, the light being emitted through those is is just about right, really. And then if we come round the front end, see that we've uh, installed the light for the uh, the anti collision at the front of the ship. And then if we can just uh, go up a little bit on the stand and then zoom in, you'll be able to see a little bit of the uh, the cockpit from this angle. You can't see a lot, unfortunately. You can see the arm of the little man there. Let's see if we can actually go up a little bit higher on this. See if we can... Uh, I don't think we're actually going to be able to see him properly. Not really, but you can you can you can barely you can make his arm out and you can make his head out a little bit in that light. But if I just uh, come around the front end of the model and just uh, zoom out for you, sorry about the uh, moving you about all over the place. If we just uh, come out a little bit and then just take the camera up as far as it can go, um, you can see the model there, and I like one of my favourite parts of the display really is the fact that you've got the blue of the. Uh, Chili grills there, and then you've got the red of the Passat scoops, and it's like a, a defined line as well. They don't seem to be uh, bleeding into each other. Um, you know, I don't know how how that's happened, but that does actually look pretty cool. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, show you the uh, the sensor dome as well, because this is one of my favourite parts as well. I still can't get over the fact that you know they are. Oh, that's actually removable. So you've got the lights for that there, and then as I say, if I just want to change the model, I can just do my voodoo magic trick and take it off, and voila, there you go. And then I can just put that back on, and it's lit back up again. Um, as I say, I still think that's uh, voodoo magic, personally. So I'll take you off the stand and see if we can get in a little bit closer to uh, the the front of the ship. So there you go, you can just, uh, you can see the little man there and you can see into the, right into the cockpit there as well which is great and then if we come round the side you can see inside there as well You can see some of the bulkheads and the chairs, and then if we go into there, you can see one edge of the transport, and then you can see the other edge of it there as well, which is absolutely great. And then come around to this side, and then there's the little man at the back, and there he is again. 
So I'm really, really happy uh, with the way that this has turned out. Uh, and that does actually now conclude the uh, build series for the Deep Space Nine models. So we've got the uh, Cardassian Galore class cruiser, the USS Defiant, the Deep Space Nine station and the, uh, the runabout. So that's all four of them. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching this uh, build series as much as I've uh, enjoyed building them. They certainly have taught me uh, a lot of different techniques when it comes to building models. And I'm now looking forward to uh, going on to the uh, Enterprise refit. And that's going to be the 1350 kit. So uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, getting my hands on that kit and building that. So until the, uh, the next video guys, thanks for watching and please do take care.